Hi people, it's me Anya and my pronouns are she and her and welcome back to my channel for a new recent ways video. The first book on this list is called The Genesis Worlds. For those who don't know, this book is a YA science fiction sequel to the Infinity Courts and it's written by one of my favorite authors of all time, hence why it was on my April TV all. The first book in this trilogy was one of my most anticipated 2021 new releases, so naturally I had very, very high expectations for this book and thankfully this book really lived up to my expectations because it was so good and it was a really really solid sequel and honestly i'm more excited for the third book in this trilogy than i was for this book because this book was so good that cliffhanger ending i mean come on it was so good the plot was so engaging and it was absolutely so intriguing the characters were so well developed and so distinct and absolutely so authentic the romance was so angsty, and that's my type of romance. You know what I mean? This book is so good, and this trilogy is so underrated, and for what? The world building was so immersive, and it was so well done. This author is literally so, so talented, and I love her so much. So anyway, with that said, I would highly, highly recommend this book, because I rated it four stars, and I really, really enjoyed it. The next book on the list is called From Dust to Flame. This book is a YA contemporary fantasy that follows a young sapphic girl who must unearth her family's secrets in order to break a curse and to save everybody she loves, including herself. This book was absolutely so fantastic, and honestly, I'm so glad that I gave it a second chance. The first time that I read this book, I didn't act it, to be completely honest, but the second time that I read it, I was so much more immersed the second time, and honestly, I don't know what changed specifically, but anyway, sometimes I just DNF books because I'm not in the mood for them right now, but I recognize that I can be later on, if that makes any sense, like not because it's objectively bad or anything like that, I mean obviously for this book it was not objectively bad, because the second time I read it, I rated it four stars, but sometimes I do DNF because a book is just bad both objectively and subjectively but anyway the point is this book was so good and i really, really enjoyed it like i mentioned multiple times i rated this book four stars because it was so awesome the plot was so engaging and it was absolutely so intriguing the word building was so awesome and it was so like intriguing and so readable the jewish culture really seeped through the pages and just came through the sapphic romance was so well developed it was absolutely so lovely the characters were so well developed and so distinct like the friendship between the main character and her brother was so lovely and it was so good this book is absolutely so awesome and it's so underrated so with that i would highly highly recommend it the next book on this list is called does my body offend you this book is a YA contemporary that follows two teenagers one of them is a person of color and the other one is white as they learn about feminism friendship and standing up for what you believe in no matter where you come from honestly i have mixed feelings for this book i rated it three stars because on the one hand i have sympathy for the poc main character and i felt intrigued by the plot and i definitely understand the importance of this book because friendship and feminism and standing up for what you believe in no matter where you come from are very very important and they're very very timely however on the other hand i have no sympathy for the white main character at all don't get me wrong i love that whole white feminism and white saviorism and like internalized misogyny were challenged but like every single time she spoke i wanted to smack her because she was so privileged you know what i mean like being white sounds like a walk in the park but for me i just get shot you know i don't know if that makes any sense or if it was a good analogy or whatever but basically I didn't love this book, and even though I understand, like, why it's timely and why it's important, like I mentioned before, I didn't really care for half the book, since half the book was in the white main character's perspective, so, like, I didn't care about her friendships, or her romance, or her background, or anything like that, but I did care about the POC main character, because for me, she felt like a more, like, sympathetic, not sympathetic, like, authentic main character than the other one. I mean, they're both authentic, but for me, I guess since the POC main character was more relatable for me, I liked her more. I don't know if that makes any sense. But basically, overall, I rated this book three stars, and I have mixed feelings for it, so I don't know exactly if I would recommend it. The next book on this list is called Osmo Unknown in the Eight Penny Woods. 
This book is a middle grade fantasy that follows a young boy who must take a journey away from the only home that he's ever known and go to the magical realm of the dead in order to fulfill a bargain for his people. This book was so amazing and it was absolutely so awesome. First of all, the world garden is so magical, so creative, and absolutely so imaginative. I love world building that like reminds me of like Furthermore and the Phantom Tollbooth and what I imagine Alice in Wonderland is like since I've never actually read or seen Alice in Wonderland. But anyway, the plot was so intriguing and it was absolutely so engaging and I had no idea what would happen next which is honestly a surprise for me because typically when I'm reading like contemporary books or middle grade books since I've read so many of them sometimes the plot is predictable but sometimes it's like so immersive that I don't necessarily pay attention to the predictability of the story but with this book it was not predictable in the slightest and we love to see it. I don't know if that really made any sense but anyway the characters were so well developed and so distinct and the friendship group dynamic was so wholesome. This book is so lovely and it's absolutely so wonderful in every single element. So anyway, with that said, I rated this book four stars and I really, really enjoyed it. So with that, I would highly, highly recommend it. The last book on this list, and certainly not the least because I rated it five stars, is called Autumn Gray. First of all, there's a trigger warning on this book for abusive relationships. This book is a YA contemporary following a young, asexual, sapphic girl as she's navigating her parents' divorce, her relationship with said parents, and her new changing friendships. This book was so amazing, and it was absolutely so well done. Like I said, I rated it five stars because there's nothing that I would change about this book, and it made me cry at least once. I had really high expectations for this book because this author previously wrote Between Perfect and Real last year, which was one of my five star favorites of 2021. And you'd think that this book would have been on my April TBR, but it wasn't because usually when an author writes a five star favorite, their next book is typically not as good. So I had lower expectations for this book in general, but it absolutely exceeded those expectations because like I mentioned, I rated it five stars and I absolutely loved it. First of all, the characters are so well developed and so distinct. I really, really enjoyed every single one of them because they each felt so authentic. Second of all, the queer representation was so lovely. Like I mentioned, the main character is asexual and sapphic and we love to see it. Third of all, the sapphic romance was so well developed and it was absolutely so lovely. The plot was so intriguing and it was so engaging. This story is absolutely so readable. Typically, I would like pay more attention to how short this book actually is because I believe that it's less than 300 pages, but since this story was so engaging, I didn't really pay attention to that. You know what I mean? Anyway, with that said, I rated this book five stars and I would absolutely highly, highly recommend it. So, in conclusion, I mentioned about two recent Leeds videos ago, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that my April reading month has not been as fruitful as my March reading month was in terms of quantity over quality, but honestly, April has picked up. I know that it's towards the end of the month, and I also know that I'm posting this in early May, so saying this may be irrelevant, but anyway, April so far, towards the end of the month now, has been a great reading month. So with that said, I'm very, very happy with my reading now. And I'm much more satisfied with it than I was in that video that I referenced. You know what I mean? Anyway, with that said, if you enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below the panda emoji if you made it all the way to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you're new. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.